Hi everyone, I'm Karen Curry Parker. Welcome to this week's Understanding Human Design podcast. And we're gonna have a really fun conversation today with human design specialist, Clorinda Mann. There's some funny things I'm gonna tell you about Clorinda as we get started. Uh, but before we get started as a 4-6 orchestrator projector, Clorinda has known from an early age that she's here to help people. And she has explored different ways to help people, including serving the world as a nurse, serving the world as an astrologer, blend, blend, blending her beautiful perspectives on the planets with her grounded capacity to really serve people in achieving higher states of wellness and has within the last couple of years integrated human design into her worldview. Here's the funny thing. Clorinda's dad is a physician and she grew up with him singing anatomy songs about fetal pigs to her, which is not a detail that I would normally pull out of a bio, but that jumped out because it was such a beautiful visual image in my mind of this father so lovingly sharing these interesting, very personal insights onto the, the development of fetal pigs. So in 2011, Clorinda had a major spiritual awakening that really kind of changed her trajectory around her career and what she, how she really wanted to serve the world, how she really wanted to help the people. So we're going to be talking today about uh, Clorinda's perspective, what caused her to really move into the work that she does now and blend all these beautiful pieces together and how she helps you use not only astrology, but astrocartography to help you find your right place and as part of that, also help you clear any trauma that you might have that's keeping you from fulfilling the true story of who you really are. Hi, Clarinda. It's so exciting to have you here. Hi, Karen. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> so so I, I have to know, and this is totally not a human design question, but did he have like a tune that he sang about the fetal pigs or was it, did he just make up his own music with that? <laughs> you know, from like the vague memories of it, it's he did his own thing. He, uh -huh. he did something with it. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I just can't imagine. I think my my current my my eleven year old would just be like, "Oh, Dad." <laughs> so, yes. So, yeah. He, yeah. But uh, I want to talk for just a second about your spiritual awakening. What 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 caused you to really move from sort of following in your family's footsteps, being, doing traditional medicine and being involved in the medicine field? How did you shift into astrology and doing the work that you do now? Well, it's really, I feel like I was forced into it. I was pushed. Um, I was at work. I had this experience where um, I thought I was dying. Mm -hmm. My heart was running up and down from like 60s to 120s and I just one of these women came up to me one of the uh, my co-workers and she said you look green right now and I was like I don't feel like myself at all um, I feel sick I need to call my husband to take me to the hospital and um, while we were on our way there it felt like something was being pulled off of me um, mm -hmm. or out of me and when I got to the hospital my heart rate actually had gotten up to 220 and it was like this huge feeling. I thought I was dying. Um, I felt like I couldn't move. And they were running all these tests and, you know, running around in circles trying to figure out what was going on. And then 30 minutes later, it just stopped. And there was nothing. Like, I was fine. And I, I was like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. And after that period, that moment, it was just like my whole viewpoint on everything started to change. Mm -hmm. And um, we just... You know, I can't explain it really, honestly. It just felt like the universe came in and was like, wake up. Um, and it took off from there. I started having a lot of dreams. I actually had dreams where I was being yelled at to wake up. So it was like, okay, I'm listening. I'm waking up. <laughs> wake up. That's about as literal as it gets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was very literal. Cool. So what, what happened that caused you to find astrology and start using astrology? I'm, I'm imagining that was your first, maybe your first sort of foray into it, your it was, it was one of my first ones. I think the very first thing was wanting to find out more about myself 
as far as where we, my family came from. And the more that I started studying and learning about a lot of the ancient aspects of our, our ancestry, that's when I actually got into astrology and uh, more of the metaphysical uh, sciences. So um, studying a lot about Egypt and learning a lot about their systems that they had been practicing there. And I just became so fascinated by it and just started digging in. And it was like crazy. I was so focused on learning as much as I could about it. And so did it feel familiar to you? Very familiar. It felt um, it felt very familiar. I felt like um, a lot of times that I was actually receiving lessons in my sleep, mm -hmm. um, that information, like a piece of me had been found that was missing and um, it just felt right. And I would, it would, it was happening really fast. You know, mm -hmm. I, the information would come in and it would just absorb and I'm like, oh, this makes sense. And I was just in this phase of like for years, just focused on learning more about it and trying to dive in as much as I could with um, astrology. A lot of, I feel like it was always spiritually led. Um, when, when there was something else that I needed to know, it would come to me, you know, it, the guidance would come, it would be here and I would just go in that direction and just start, you know, studying it. Um, and that's basically how this whole journey has really been. Um, it was interesting to find human design, you know, when I did. And I thought, again, that was another one of those spiritual push things. So, <laughs> so so I, I am curious, you know, you, you have a father who is a physician, you are working as a nurse, you know, that is sometimes a more conservative way to serve as a healer. How did your family react to you sort of suddenly embracing astrology and Reiki and other kinds of more esoteric ways of healing people? <laughs> Yes. So um, very conservative background, um, family, you know, in uh, Christianity mm -hmm. and um, astrology was devil worship. So basically it was really kind of like a harsh and devil worship by the society, like by societal viewpoints at the time mm -hmm. and how my family viewed it. Um, so I was definitely more black sheep um, for my viewpoints and my beliefs at that time. So, is it better? Some of my family members, like, you know, with my mother, it's gotten better. Mm -hmm. um, but with a lot of them, no. Yeah. yeah. I, I hear that a lot from, from people who go through an awakening process and come from a more traditional conservative background that mm -hmm. there's a real struggle to continue to sustain that relationship bridge. So... Yeah. Um, I, I honor you for having the courage to keep doing what is truth for you, even in the face of that. I know that's very difficult and I really appreciate your dedication to your service. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so you started exploring astrology, Reiki, and then, uh, in 2019, you, I'm assuming, based on what you're saying, you kind of bumped into human design. You were led here. Is that correct? Yes, I was. Uh, I was bumped, and it was. I was the three three times for me is usually when it's like, okay, I'm listening, because um, I'm kind of hard headed sometimes. But um, I heard about human design on a podcast, and I'm like, okay, and then I just kind of turned it off. It came again to my attention, and I was like, this is interesting. Maybe I need to learn more about it. And then the last time was like, okay, fine, I'm going to start. <laughs> so it was like um, 2019 was a big year too. you know, I, a lot of changes where I knew I wasn't going to be the same. That was my first time going overseas. And um, I went to an astrology retreat there and it was just a big deal. My family doesn't, you know, for my family, it was huge. Like you're going over there. What are you doing over there? And it's just like not wanting to really tell everybody why I was going, but um, <laughs> I was going for an astrology retreat uh, in Bulgaria. And when I got there, I was like, I'm not going to be the same anymore. I can, I'm not even going to, I'm going to be a different person. And so the timing of that trip, which was um, in June, and then like just a, like a month or a couple months later, by, by, uh, being kind of pushed into human design. And that just completely changed everything. So beautiful. So you're, you have basically, Obviously, all of it is something that you're excited and passionate about, but you really love to do astrocartography. And 
especially astrophotography through the lens of human design. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, that is definitely one of my favorite things to do. Um, so I have always liked to move around and travel and um, I'm very sensitive to energy and location and human design gave me an understanding of why that was. Mm -hmm. And astrocartography helped as well. It was, they were like almost simultaneously brought into my life. Um, so this understanding that my openness and my sensitivity to a location, um, I'm not just crazy. Oh, I'm really experiencing this there, you know, if I'm not in the right place. And so astrocartography being so powerful as a tool to help us find places that are actually going to resonate with us, um, depending on what we're looking for in, in various locations. And one of the most interesting aspects is um, I was doing like an experiment. I like to experiment um, and research. And it is, you know, with the defined and the op versus the open G center, I can do astrocartography for both. We can look at the location for both, but it seems that when that center is open, there is an increased sensitivity to more of the subtle energies in a location. Um, and so it means that we're actually looking at a more detailed breakdown of aspects that might be going on in the astrological chart um, that are creating this difference. And um, as far as human design, certain gates, and this is not, you know, a proven fact yet, but I'm still looking at it and I find it interesting. A lot of people that were coming to me had certain gates defined mm. um, and would experience some similar type things. That's cool. That's very cool. And that's, that's something that, you know, people ask people with an open G, especially ask me a lot about, they say, well, okay, so right place is important, but how do I find my right place? And mm -hmm. having that, I think as an adjunct tool, and I'm, I'm always referring them to, to astrocartographers because that insight of how to work with those energies and, and work with those energies in the context of not just the open G, but in terms of where you are with life cycle and what your intentions are. And, you know, looking at those powerful moments where sometimes we need to consciously cultivate a geographical energy, if you will. Right. Mm -hmm. So you also have a background in working in with mental health and working with trauma. Talk to me about how you see human design as an extension of your nursing background and helping people with trauma? Uh, you know what? I'm, I've been shocked how much they're connected. Um, and again, I feel like the more that I'm doing human design, the more I see that most of it comes back to the G Center. Mm. And when we start tapping into these, like, like the gate 10 or things regarding like around self-love and self-worth um, and trauma starts to come up there was some type of tra traumatic experience that created this feeling that I have within myself, you know, um, and I think working as a nurse, that being basically what I did all the time um, mm -hmm. on a one-to-one -one basis with my patients, it, it kind of feels just like a, a natural setting, like a natural thing to do um, when we're doing that trauma work. And I don't, it's just been really powerful to, to do it from the lens of, through the lens of human design, mm -hmm. because in the hospital, you know, it's, there's a lot of bureaucracy and there's a lot of pushing pharmaceutical um, treatments onto people, which I'm not against if it's necessary. Mm -hmm. um, but there's some things that just need to be processed. You know, um, there's not a pill for grieving a loved one uh, that can really take that, what we need to go through the grieving process or um, traumatic experiences that happened in our early childhood. Those are things that we really have to talk about and, and kind of get to the core on. And mm -hmm. with healthcare being so strained, I just didn't feel like I was able to really do that on the level that I wanted to um, for my patients, not able to serve, you know, the way that I felt like people were really needing. And so um, in him, with doing these one-on-one um, -on -one sessions through the lens of human design has just been such a powerful way to, to, to really try to help people. Um, and I see a lot of healing. And what I've been doing is actually a lot of times just incorporating Reiki into mm -hmm. that um, with the human design reading um, or right afterwards so that we can help to clear some of that energy that's been stuck because it starts coming up. Um, it starts mm -hmm. coming up really quick. And then I didn't know this, you know, before as a projector, it's kind of like honing in to what's going on. Um, and then kind of helping to pull it out 
um, in a safe space. So it, it, it's just been amazing for me to do this kind of work um, mm -hmm. through human design, like this new way. I feel like I'm helping people so much more than I was really given like the ability to do in the hospital. I, I totally agree. I mean, I, I you know, as, as a nurse myself, and I haven't been on the floor. Well, I was only on the floor for a short time anyway, but because um, I don't take orders well, apparently. But um, <laughs> but um, but I have always felt like everything I do with human design is just an, it's just nursing. It's just a different a different roof over my head. Um, but I love you know I love that when we were talking beforehand, you were talking about how everything you do is assessing, um, and then giving people insights and awareness. And I think that's. It's so interesting to know how just reframing the story of the chart sometimes can be so phenomenally healing mm -hmm. where people can start to see what in the past has been something painful can be converted into a, a new understanding that helps them see that it was a gift and it is a gift. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, definitely. It's powerful um, to see people walking away from the session feeling uplifted and mm -hmm. feeling like a heavy burden had been, you know, eased off of their shoulders and that they can move forward. Um, it just is the, the best feeling I think I've had in years, you know, to see people walking away feeling like that. So it's, it's confirmation for me that this is the right track. <laughs> Good. Awesome. Awesome. So how can people get in touch with you? I'm sure everybody's wanting their, they want an astrocartography session <laughs> or more. <laughs> how can they find you? How do they find you if they can find themselves? <laughs> Yes, that's perfect. Um, so I am easily found on Instagram at Astro Energetic Healing. Um, and there's a link in my bio they can click to, to find my services and they can go from there. Mm -hmm. um, and my website is www.astroenergetics.org. And then I'm also on the specialist page. Absolutely. Um, if you go to <laughs> system.com and find uh, our human design specialist, Clarinda's right there. So, yeah. so astroenergetics.com or quantumalignmentsystem.com or on Instagram as Astro Energetics. So awesome. Clarinda, thank you for sharing your time and your brilliance with us today. I really appreciate having you as part of our team and I've really enjoyed getting to know you better and I'm excited uh, to watch and notice and pay attention to and follow the next exciting uh, thing that you're going to be integrating and doing and contributing. So thank you. I appreciate it this time. Thank you so much, Karen, for having me. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> <laughs> Love you too. Bye.